it also reminded me of, uh, again, when I was uh, just starting out, uh, Halvar Flake, he's like the guy who is just the man at reverse engineering and using IDA Pro and just understanding like binary and x86. So they had a little competition. He put together a little HackMe file. So HackMe is like just for educational purposes. It's a computer mm -hmm. program. You try to reverse engineer, see how it works. So apparently he, he created one that if you loaded it up in IDA Pro, it would actually crash IDA Pro. Okay. So that was like, he was so advanced in knowing how IDA Pro works that just loading the file would crash it. And so as defenders... At least it wasn't a remote code execution no. but type it, bug, right? But it could have been. <laughs> could have been, right? Um, which, which would be kind of scary, right? Yeah, and you always have to be careful with that. So that's why as defenders, we always have to pay attention to that. And we also have to keep our tools up to date and we have to take precautions because the analysis tools themselves can become a vector of infection, uh, you know, depending on the malware you're loading. You're, you're right. already dealing with code that's trying to do something malicious. And stuff like this always reminds me of that FireEye article from like maybe a few months ago, where uh, you know how the FireEye devices work. If you recall, mm -hmm. they just passively tap and execute malware in a sandbox. Well, they had uh, a technique, uh, I guess these bad guys, that they would send a specific malware binary that the FireEye would try to run in the sandbox and the malware would be able to like escape the sandbox and get itself in the whitelist or something like that. Right, so right. that class of bugs is very interesting to me where you're attacking the defense mechanisms themselves. Right. So this is just one of those. What well, also reminds me, I think you had another sample you had looked at maybe last year or something where it, um, what did it do? Like disable the network interface? Yes. Oh, so yeah, yeah. when the malware analysis, like you're running this sample in a malware analysis environment and it disconnected the network interface. So I think something happened there where well, it like the stopped processes. the processing or something, right? Yeah, I yeah. think the way Cuckoo works, uh, which is one of the sandbox uh, that was impacted by this, is it collects telemetry on the malware, how it's working. And at the time, I think Cuckoo worked by you know, opening up a network socket to some kind of reporting server and sending all this telemetry there. Well, the malware would run and would shut down the network interface card and then restart it a few seconds later. But by right. doing that, it would disconnect the reporting framework uh, from the telemetry gathering program. Right. And so basically, your analysis would fail, your automated analysis, and you wouldn't know, like, oh, so I don't know what happened. Right, you'd just be like, oh, whatever, what was it? Yeah, no what was information. <laughs> what was interesting about that is how it presented itself in the sandbox results, and you never usually see this. It's like, oh, it's an error. Why would there be an error in the sandbox? You know, I've never, you know, so it's pretty uh, unique to see that. But again, I wonder, you know, not that we know, but that was an interesting technique where I wonder if whoever, you know, made their malware do that, if they realized we're doing this intentionally because we know it breaks some of these automated malware analysis yeah. environments. They would know? almost have to for that one. And you know what was interesting about that malware sample is that it was very simple. So in terms of reverse engineering, it, it was not that difficult. There were not too many obfuscation uh, techniques. You could have just easily loaded that one up into, let's say, IDA Pro and seen a lot of the functionality very quickly. Uh, and once you knew where to look, you didn't even have to load it up into IDA Pro anymore. You could have just extracted what you needed from the samples. Right. Uh, but uh, so it was interesting to me that they used that technique specific to like dynamic sandbox environments and things right, like that. Right. So yeah, they, I think they they knew what they were dealing with, but they didn't take all the possible precautions they could have right. in that case. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they need to do that. Plus, they need to have function names in their DLLs that are just blanks. Blank. Plus, right. they need Plus. to obfuscate it and pack it and everything. Wait, I don't think we're giving away too many secrets. <laughs>